What's up guys and welcome back to another Hello Neighbor Theory video. Now before we begin, I highly recommend checking out my first Hello Neighbor Theory video if you haven't already, because I'm not really going to be repeating what we covered last time, being who the neighbor is and what he's doing in his basement. This video I really want to focus on Alpha 2, because not only has it brought a lot more evidence with it, but it's also the most confusing update to come to this game yet. As the protagonist, you move into a new neighborhood, begin unloading your car, and after a run-in with a crow and a crow bar, you enter your new home and lay down to rest. All of a sudden, you're attacked by the neighbor, you're removed from your home, and when you wake up, everything is different, and your quest to the basement begins. Many people's first inclination was to point out that this doesn't make any sense. Why would the neighbor steal your home? This isn't how the game has played out thus far. How could he move all of this stuff into your house and change so many things so dramatically after dragging you and the couch outside? Well, they're right. It doesn't make any sense if this is what you think is really happening. I believe that the entire post-nap portion of this game is actually a haunted dream. Let me explain. There are a lot of differences between the world that you fall asleep in and the world that you wake up in. The additions to the backyard and the house, the windows, all of the furniture, this is stuff that comes off as the most obvious. But if you look across the street before you go to sleep, you'll notice that the house next door changes dramatically before and after you've slept. One of the most interesting changes actually comes if you explore your house before sleeping. You're actually going to find that there is no basement. Instead, you find this odd brick closet. If the neighbor really did knock you out and move you outside to steal your home, he would have had to move all of his stuff in, renovated the house, completely rebuilt the house next door, and dug a basement while you slept. It seems unlikely, no matter how strong those sleeping pills are. This would take an awful lot of time, which is exactly what we're dealing with here. Time. Just not in the direction that you assume. Usually, an old dilapidated house would be torn down and renovated over years into something more tidy and modern. A house would be abandoned and the windows would be boarded up. A basement would be blocked off rather than built under a pre-existing house. A car would knock over a fence rather than hit a knocked over fence. Do you see where I'm going with this? The tutorial doesn't take place before the neighbor, it takes place long after it. You haven't been sleeping for years, but are rather experiencing the events which took place years ago in a dream. It seems like a bit of an oddly supernatural cop-out for a story until you remember what the neighbor has actually been doing in his basement. Do you remember my last video where we discussed how the neighbor and his unknown accomplice, two carnival workers, are kidnapping women and children, holding them in their basement, and eventually burying them alive? We may be experiencing the past through them. You can call it chi, you can call it a haunting, bad energy, whatever you want to go with, but both the victims and the neighbor are long gone, but the horrors that took place in this house are still here. The basement and its atrocities were bricked off and the house was sold to one unlucky young man. So we know when, but do we know why? Motive was something that I left out of the previous video because there simply wasn't enough evidence to support a good theory, but the addition of a few critical pieces really does drive it home with the Alpha 2 update. So why would the neighbor and his accomplice be doing such terrible things? Well, the devil's in the details. And it's also on the bottom of the neighbor's shoes. Using a number of different cheats, we can actually see that the neighbor has the devil's mark on the soles of his feet. 666. In Alpha 1, he didn't just bury people alive in unmarked graves, which is really what you would expect from a murderer who is ideally trying not to get caught. I mean, he's really defensive about his neighbors looking in his windows, so why is it that he's taking the time to affix a cross to every single victim marking their graves? This has led many people to believe that the neighbor is the devil, but that's actually been denied by the developers on Twitter. While the neighbor may not be the devil, he does know him. On both the mailboxes, we can see 1414, a strange number to use as an address, nonetheless two addresses to different houses. While there are many Bible passages under chapter 14, verse 14, and it is a bit of a stretch to pick and choose which ones you think are fitting, some of the most interesting ones can be found in Isaiah, Job, and John. Isaiah 14, 14 reads, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. This doesn't make much immediate sense until you realize that this is actually one of the final quotes from Lucifer himself before being cast out of heaven. Job 14.14 reads, If someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. 
This certainly does fit with our theme of reliving events of the past, events of those who died at the hands of the neighbor whose hard service to the devil will ultimately be rewarded. But it really isn't until John 1414, however, where it spelled out for us. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. The devil says jump, and the neighbor asks how high. The trend of serving the devil continues in the basement, with many candles on the floor very reminiscent of satanic worship, but the biggest piece of evidence to this relationship really comes in this piece of concept art. Just to the left of the neighbor, you can see a shadowy figure looming in the dark. Many people have theorized that this is actually the devil himself, but as we discussed in the last video, I really believe that this is the accomplice. It seems odd that the devil would be wearing a sweater and similar gloves to the neighbor. We also wouldn't really expect him to be physically manifested on Earth, but we would expect this man with a very similar hairline to our silhouette. This picture does have another huge piece of evidence, however. The book, Faust. We can actually see this book with the neighbor multiple times in multiple different references, and the story of Faust is actually an interesting one. It's about a scholar who sells his soul to the devil, but that's a bit of an oversimplification for our purpose. In reality, he never encounters the devil directly, but rather he makes a deal with the devil's representative, Mephistopheles. Mephistopheles agrees to serve Faust for a set number of years, but once his term is over, the devil would claim Faust's soul and be eternally damned. Could this really be our subservient, nameless accomplice, the man lurking in the shadows, spending his time in the basement when the neighbor lives comfortably in our house? Could this be our story's Mephistopheles? There are a number of loose links that could be made between these two, the possibility of a woman that he loves, of a murdered child, etc, etc, but truth be told, I'm not the person to make those connections, I really don't have the primary literature on hand, and I'd really rather not make conclusions based off of the limited Wikipedia summaries. When it comes to the book, you get the idea. So that's it, right? The neighbor is a Satan-worshipping clown who works with a demon to abduct women and children, and you're just the unfortunate new home buyer to wake up in the aftermath. Well, not quite. There's still one thing that I've struggled to explain. One thing so out of place, yet so easily overlooked that it had to be mentioned. You probably don't even see it in front of you right now. How about now? A medical gurney in the neighbor's house. Not only is the object itself incredibly out of place, but so is its style. All of the furniture and the objects in the game are incredibly stylized. They have these strange, cartoony proportions. This Dr. Seuss-like style was one of the big things to come to the Alpha 2 update, and it was one of the first things that really tipped me off as to this being an entire dream. But everything follows this style except for the gurney, which looks exactly like it would in real life, yet it exists in our dream world and not the tutorial. So why? Well, to answer that, we first need to ask another question. If the neighbor bargained with the devil, what did he get in return? That's how it works after all. If you give up something, you receive something in return. If the devil is forcing the neighbor to abduct women and children and murder them, what on earth could the neighbor receive to be worth doing that? For Faust, it was unlimited knowledge and pleasure. For our neighbor, perhaps, it's something a lot less selfish. I spoke about the continuous subject of children in the last video, how the neighbor has a nursery, how he has a home school, and children's drawings littered around his home, and at first this came off as a way to calm the abductees. I mean, if you were going to abduct people from a circus and keep them quiet in your home, you would want kids to not be freaking out all the time, and surrounding them with things that they're accustomed to would probably do that. Maybe they mean something else. Did the neighbor have a family? Does he currently have a family? Maybe a sick child who could only be saved by a deal with the devil? It would make sense that a sick kid would have to be homeschooled. He would have so little to do in his spare time but draw while bound to his medical bed. A sick child made better by the devil who would someday return to the house where it all happened. It's a stretch, but it's an interesting concept when you consider how the game plays out. The cutscenes are all shot from a child's perspective, looking up at the neighbor. Even though you're a grown man with a crowbar, rather than defending yourself, you're only able to really hurt the neighbor with a childish dart gun. Did I mention that there's one more Bible verse? Okay, I know, it's like I said, it's picking and choosing, it's a stretch, but this one is really interesting. 
All of the boxes the protagonist is moving at the beginning of the game has 1804 on them. Now, I don't believe that this is a date, it is formatted as such, but I mean, look at the car, look at the equipment that we have. It doesn't really seem like 2004, it doesn't seem like current times. Ezekiel 184, however, is a great way to finish this video. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But that's gonna be it for this theory video, guys. And as always, I feel the need to let people know that I'm not really a theory channel. I make gameplay videos, I make funny moments, that kind of stuff, but every now and then a game gets me thinking and I love sharing it with you guys. And I only really bring it up because I don't want people to subscribe and feel let down if this kind of stuff doesn't show up all the time. I mean, if the Alpha 3 drops Christmas time and it comes with a lot of major revelations, then maybe I will have to do a third video. You guys will have to let me know if you'd like to see that. Be sure to leave a like and leave a comment letting me know about your theories, because the last time that I did this, a lot of people left a lot of very interesting theories. I love discussing this kind of stuff with people, so be sure to let me know. But thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.